The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon to everybody out here on the East Coast, and good morning to everyone else uh, throughout the country. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as I'm sure you already know, we are going to be talking about one of Rainbow's um, core products, um, one of our interesting, more interesting products, I guess you would also think of it as a uh, trans tech here today. So today we're going to be talking about the science and uses of trans tech. Um, but before we get going, a little housekeeping, of course, um, this is a one of our shorter uh, webinars, uh, but it's still worth a half of an ISA CEU. Um, so, you know, December is quick approaching, so make sure you get all your CEUs in. Um, if you did not um, put in your ISA certification number uh, prior to this to today or while you're registering, you can do that now. Just simply expand the GoToMeeting box here. You see that little arrow, if that's uh, not seeing that, click on that, you'll show this whole box here. Um, and you can put your number, your ISA number right there in that chat box. And we'll get that recorded and we'll make sure that you get your half a CU for today. Um, if you had any questions throughout the webinar, you can see we also have a little tab for questions. So if you have questions throughout the webinar, um, please put your questions in that box right there. Um, Matt Karst um, in Minnesota is assisting today with our webinar. So at the conclusion of the presentation, we'll take questions and, and Matt will read those all for us. Um, and this day, today the webinar is being recorded and it will be available um, at some point in the near future where you can watch this. Um, you can find it on our website at treecarescience.com or our YouTube channel. Um, so keep that stuff in mind as well as we go forward today. And my name again is Patrick Anderson. I'm an arborologist with Rainbow Tree Care Scientific Advancements. Um, I work with our, our clients and our territory staff um, on training and product development protocol um, questions, things of that nature. Um, you can feel free to reach out to me at any time um, today or after. You can see my information down there. Um, and then you can always call um, our Solutions Center, our tech support line. That number is right there, uh, where you'll get a live person that can help you with um, product questions, protocol questions, ordering needs. Uh, and again, we pride ourselves on the fact that um, you do actually talk to a real human being, and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can with any questions that you may have. Um, and you can always go to our website again, it's treecarescience.com, and we have a lot of good information there. Another quick reminder before we get into the webinar today, um, saluting branches is coming up. Again, we're going into our fifth year. Uh, it'll be September 18th, 2019. Um, and again, we have um, VA cemeteries throughout the country um, that you have the opportunity to go and do a day of service for. It's a really great event. It's very rewarding. If you have the time or are interested, highly recommend you check out the website, salutingbranches.com. Find ways that you can um, either donate or volunteer uh, to Saluting Branches. And of course, we would be much appreciated for that. And it's always a good time. And I always like to start webinars uh, just with some uh, rainbow statistics here. Again, as you guys know, we are a, a research-based um, company. All of our products and protocols um, are very well vetted before we release them. And our goal is, of course, to improve um, our profession, and specifically with tree and shrub care management. So last year alone, we did over 150 research trials throughout the country. And you can see there some of the research institutions and um, companies that we have worked with. Um, and there's some that aren't even represented, but over 150 research trials uh, to, again, improve um, products and equipment and protocols in our industry. Uh, at this point, we've created over 160 protocols. Um, we've created white papers. And of course, we have classroom training, in-house training, um, not unlike what we're doing here today via webinar. We provide diagnostic guides, and we are continually developing new protocols based upon everybody's um, needs and desires. So um, always feel free to communicate with us if you have a pest or a problem out there you're having trouble managing. Um, we're interested in helping out. And then finally, our list of company values. Again, this is a product-centered um, 
presentation today. So we're going to be, be specifically talking about one of our products. But know that you know we are really here to help. So everything we talk about here, of course, is science-based. And always keep in mind that idea of honesty and integrity. Um, we try to really live up to these standards um, every day. So with those things in mind, let's get into the meat of the presentation today. So today we will be talking about one of our products, TransTech. Um, we're going to be talking today about what is TransTech, the advantages of TransTech. We'll look at some proven research, and then we'll just take an example, a real broad brush of some common pest protocols uh, where you can include TransTech um, into that protocol to help effectively manage that pest on landscapes. So with that, what is TransTech? So the active ingredient in TransTech is Dynatefuran. You see there, it is 70% Dynatefuran. Now this is a key distinction. There are other products out there. compared to some of our other products out there that have less percent um, active ingredient. So when you're mixing, you'll have the same amount of active ingredient in that solution, but because with TransTech, it is the actual water-soluble granular is so much more, um, of so much more of that is that active ingredient, we simply get to use less of it in solution and be just as effective. So that's where when we look at mixing and rates, um, you really have to take a look at the percentage of active ingredient and you'll find, again, TransTech, highest amount of active ingredient, um, which again is the key factor there is it goes into solution really easy compared to some of these other things. Um, when we look at the unit of TransTech, the standard unit of TransTech, it comes like this. It is this foil pouch, which is resealable, and it comes with 20 water soluble packets and these water soluble packets are 0.6 ounces by weight so again that's a weight measurement not a volume measurement um, and so you'll have 20 of those in one of these units um, now the cool thing about TransTech um, is we can apply this in multiple different ways um, we can use this as a soil application either as a low volume basal drench or a soil injection we can use it as a foliar application, which I think a lot of folks might um, forget is a really viable way to make this application. Um, and then we can also do it as a systemic basal bark spray application, which is a really, really neat way to make applications to trees, um, especially when it comes to the ease of the application. You know, you don't have to get a lot of equipment to go and do it. Um, and it's a really great way and it's very effective and we have data to show how effective it can be. Um, so one of the key distinctions here again is this water soluble packet. Um, again, this is a, when we look at these water soluble packets, they're 0.6 ounces by weight. So that is a weight measurement, not a volume measurement. Other Dynatefuran products out there in the market that are also granulars, when you look at the label, they're also in weight measurements. So what they usually do is they come with a special cylinder, which um, it has hash marks for weight, but you're pouring it into a cylinder, which is actually, you know, obviously you're pouring it into a volume measure, trying to get an accurate weight measurement. And there's always something lost in translation when you go from weight to volume. Um, so that's the nice thing about TransTech is that water soluble packet is pre-measured. So there's nothing lost in translation. So again, that being said, you're not going to over or underdose a tree using TransTech because again, that packet is pre-measured and that is, it, it allows you to be really confident in your dosing and application when compared to some other non-tefuran products out there on the, um, the market. And again, because it's usually just a matter of counting packets, it goes really, really quickly. Um, and again, if you have if you, inexperienced technicians or even just as an experienced technician yourself, um, it's just really easy to make that application. Um, the other nice thing about TransTech, like our other Dynatefuran products, is it's very, very quick with uptakes. So when we talk about the soil application or the systemic lower bark spray application, 
this product moves very quickly in the tree to get up into the canopy to begin affecting pests. So we see effects within one to two weeks, even on larger trees, you know, again, 20 inch plus trees, we see very, very fast uptake. And um, again, the, the plant, um, or excuse me, the pest being affected by the product uh, and perishing very quickly. So that's one of the huge advantages of Transtech is we can think of this as a in-season, just-in-time treatment without having to make foliar applications. Um, so again, we know all the issues that can we can run into with foliar applications, with drift and off-target things, and just it seems as though society as a whole is looking less and less favorably at those types of applications. We can do a soil application or a systemic lower bark spray application of Transtech and be very effective with it. Um, the other nice thing about Transtech is it has a very large range of pests that it will affect. Um, so it, if you're familiar with products that contain imidacloprid like Zytec, it's arguably the most popular um, active ingredient in the um, landscape industry, imidacloprid that is like Zytec. We will affect just about all the same pests that we will affect with Zytec, with Transtec. Um, just again, the nice side thing is, is that it'll get up into the plant quicker. So our timing doesn't have to be as exactly dead on as we might have to be with Zytec. The other nice thing is that Transtec works very, very well on armored scales, which is a key distinction when we compare this to other products containing imidacloprid. Imidacloprid does not work well on many of our armored scales, whereas Transtech does work very well on some of our armored scales. Um, and again, not only armored scales, but some of our um, phloem feeding and vascular feeding, boring insects, our leaf feeding true bugs, as well as our leaf feeding beetles, uh, and many, many other um, chewing and sucking pests there. So to show its speed, and this is, again, one of the nice things about it is that it affects a lot of pests and it moves very, very quickly. If we look at Transtech, which are, are these red bars, compare that to imidacloprid, which are these yellow bars. And this here is in 15 to 20 foot tall sycamores. If we look here at the amount of active ingredient in the leaf tissue after a given set of days, so you can see that even after 120 days, we have more Transtech in the plant when compared to imidacloprid. So again, after seven days, we have more Transtech in the plant than we have after 120 days of imidacloprid. So the product is moving very quickly within the vascular system of the tree to affect pests. So once again, if you are on a landscape and you find um, a plant damaging pest that's active, you can apply Transtech as a soil application or as a lower bark spray application, and it will be very effective. So that's a key distinction there uh, when we look at Transtech applications. If we look at Transtech versus imidacloprid being applied different ways, once again, what we're seeing here is we're seeing that Transtech is moving up into the plant and staying active for a long period of time when we can play, compare it to imidacloprid. So if we look at this as Transtech applied with our um, proprietary HTI soil injection device, this is Transtech being applied using standard spray equipment with a standard root feeding probe. This is Transtech as a soil drench at one quart inch diameter. This is Transtech as a soil drench at um, a tenth of a gallon, and this is Transtech as a lower systemic bark spray. And all of these we're getting efficacy up into the crown for a long period of time, in this case 90 days, so three months. And we are seeing that we are having maintaining higher concentrations faster and for a long, longer period of time than Zytech. So a very good um, application for just just in time treatments and you say this is done on your average bur these are bur oaks the average bur oak being um, 22.7 inches in diameter so a fairly good sized plant if we compare dinotefuran which is the active ingredient in transtech to other popular these are all neonicotinoid insecticides neonicotinoids are highly systemic if we look at their KOC values, which the KOC value has, um, it translates into um, 
the active ingredient getting held up in the vascular system, you can see that dinotefrin has a very low KOC value. Again, this translates into the product moving very well into the plant. Likewise, we know water solubility plays a role in distribution in the plant, and you can see dinotefrin is by far the highest water solubility of the other neonicotinoids, which are all thought to be very good systemic products. So again, dinotefuran works extremely well to distribute itself into the plant, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and affect pests. Now, this is how, and this is how I've used this in the past. I think a lot of people have used this in the past. This is how this can become a companion product to Zytec. So, Zytec, again, Transtec and Zytec, they affect many of the same pests. We know with Zytec that it can take 30 to 120 days to build up to levels in the plant to where it's going to be damaging the pest. And that's why we always make that suggestion with Zytec to apply in the spring. As you apply in the spring, it's moving up into the plant and it's affecting pests later on into the season. Likewise, Zytec has a long residual, so we can also apply in the fall, so that it'll be available to affect pests that next season. But the question becomes, what if you walk in and you find a plant damaging pest at high levels here in June? Well, if we applied Zytec, chances are we wouldn't get enough product into the plant to affect the pest, but we can use Transtec. So again, knowing Transtec moves quickly, we can affect our pest. And then we could use Zytec either in the fall or in the spring to maintain control throughout the whole season. So that's another distinction with Transtec. Uh, you can use it in season to affect plant pests. Here's an example of using um, our products for hemlock woolly adelgid. So Zytec works very well in hemlock woolly adelgid. In fact, there's data to show it might last up to seven years in some situations in hemlocks. So specifically in hemlocks, not in other trees, make sure we have that distinction clear there. Um, when we compare here though to a hemlock that was affected by woolly adelgid with Zytec and Transtec, we see across the board that trees treated with Transtec actually recover faster from hemlock woolly adelgid. Um, not to say that hemlock woolly adelgid or Zytec doesn't affect hemlock woolly adelgid very well, it does. And likewise, Transtec, we're not getting that same residual we might only, we're only going to see a season of residual of Transtec versus several seasons with Zytec, but they recover much faster. Another key distinction with Transtec versus imidacloprid is that spider mite outbreaks have not been associated with treatments with Transtec. Um, as some of you may know or have heard, that when we treat trees systemically with imidacloprid, we do run the risk of inciting a spider mite outbreak. And so on something like a hemlock, we can have spider mites on hemlocks, as well as hemlock woolly adelgid, as well as elongated hemlock scale, which is an armored scale. And if you remember that distinction, imidacloprid does not work well on armored scales, whereas Transtec does work very well on armored scales. So using Transtec in a situation like we just described, we are very effective at killing hemlock woolly adelgid. We do not incite a spider mite outbreak, but we can also affect the elongated hemlock scale if it is also present on the plant. So another um, bonus of using Transtec. Looking at another non-native pest, one that's becoming, may become a, a huge issue, has the potential of causing a lot of damage in our landscape as well as some of our agricultural industries, is spotter and lanternfly. And if you guys aren't familiar with spotter and lanternfly, uh, it was identified just a few years ago uh, in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, has since been found in other parts, other neighboring states like New York, New Jersey, Delaware, um, Maryland, and Virginia. Um, and has the potential, has a host range of over 70 species. Um, so potential threat but again, Transtec as a lower bark spray is becoming the industry standard to treat for this pest. And so here you can see um, Transtec at different rates. This is applied as the um, systemic lower bark spray method, comparing that to the untreated plants uh, and the amount of mortality we're seeing there with spotted lanternfly. So a 
extremely effective on spotted lantern fly. And in this case here, using it as the systemic lower bark spray method. As I've mentioned several times now, TransTech works extremely well on armored scales. So if we look at TransTech here and we compare that to popularly, pop, popularly applied foliar insecticides for armored scale, what we're looking at here is we're looking at efficacy against pine needle scale. The yellow treatments here are foliar applications. So this is three spray treatments of foliar applications of these products versus one soil applied treatment of dinotefuran. And we're looking at percent mortality. So three spray treatments of these other products work extremely well against pine needle scale when compared to controls. But you look at the dinotefuran, this is one um, application, soil applied application. So this is one visit by a technician one low volume application, there's no spraying, there's no drift, nothing of that nature, um, and extremely effective on this pest. Looking in some more um, data here against pine needle scale, here what we're looking at is the percentage of mortality of nymphs versus, so here we have over 90% mortality versus our control. Here we're looking at number of live females, again on average, over 126 live females versus no live females with trans tech. So again, this is one application, one soil applied application of trans tech being very effective on scales. Here's one more piece of data from armored scales. This is gloomy scale. This is a scale that is really common in um, Southeast and Southern landscapes, especially on red maple. And again, what we're seeing here is the lower bark spray, the systemic bark spray application of TransTech versus the soil injection of TransTech using the HTI. And then finally, the untreated control. And we can see the vast difference in our treatments here. So very effective at both applications in controlling gloomy scale in this trial. And then finally, what has been the poster child for so many years of TransTech? This is false oleander scale on Southern Magnolia really common armored scale insect from Florida following the eastern coast um, in the southeast. And you can see the difference between our untreated plant and our treated plant and the number of scales. Um, some really fantastic results. With our time left, if we look here at the application methods. So again, when we talk about soil application, we're talking about low volume applications, either with a direct soil injection right around the base of the tree or doing a low volume drench around the base of the tree. Um, and again, what research has shown is that the closer we are to the tree, the more of those fine roots we are going to affect per volume of soil. So the closer we get to the tree, the more fine roots we run into. Not of course that they're not all the way out well past the drip line, but we're just talking about volume. They get more and more spread out as they get further away from the tree. So we're able to affect more as we get really, really close to the trees. So and when we talk about soil applications, we're always talking about being as close to the tree as we can, as practical. Um, and just some ideas of rates here. So as far as the high rate in the soil application for trees, we'd use one packet for five inches in diameter. Um, and so that would translate to one unit would treat 100 inches of diameter. At our lower rate, we'd use one packet for 17 inches of diameter, and that would tr translate to that one, so that one unit, that one 20 pack unit would treat 340 inches of diameter. Um, likewise, with shrubs, with shrubs, we're looking at feet of shrub height, and here we're looking at one packet treating 10 feet of shrub height at the high rate, and one packet treating 17 feet of shrub height at the low rate. Now, if we look at the systemic basal bark spray, this is one that um, for sure uh, I would highly recommend. This is a really neat way to make applications. This photograph is actually from NC State University. Um, but here we're looking at our rate being six to 12 packets per gallon of solution. Um, when we talk about which rate to use, when we get to trees larger than 25 inches in diameter, depending upon the um, pest species and the um, severity, we look at going to those higher rates. Specifically with emerald ash borer, the recommendation and the research shows to start at eight packets per gallon of solution. 
And then when we're making that application, we're looking at applying one and a half to two ounces of solution per inch dBH. Um, and of course, how much you're putting on would depend upon um, the bark thickness. Um, so this would be an example of how we would do this lower bark spray and the rates. Again, very, very effective. Um, you can see here what a unit will treat. So 281 to 106 inches of diameter. Um, so again, a very fast way to make applications. Now, one of the questions that we often get is, you know, do you need to use a bark penetrant when applying TransTech? Um, and that's a great question. So it comes down to the tree species, believe it or not. Um, and so what we're finding um, with our spotted lanternfly research is that with things like red maple, we highly recommend using a bark surfactant. Um, for whatever reason, that species seems to um, need a bark surfactant or a bark penetrant for the product to move into the lenticels. Um, now, conversely, with ash trees and emerald ash borer, um, there's data out there to support, and specifically from Dan Herms at Ohio State, formerly of Ohio State University, um, that you don't need a bark penetrant in those applications. So some species you do need some, some you don't. Um, I would recommend that you, if applicable, you use a bark penetrant in all your applications. It's just going to improve the formulation, or excuse me, it's going to improve the solution. It's going to help to get through the tree. So why not? Uh, of course, at the rates that we're putting in bark penetrant, you do have the issue of phytotoxicity at any underbrush. So that might also be a, um, a factor to think of. Um, so again, in general, I would say use a bark penetrant um, unless you know you have a bed of pachysandra or false salmon seal or some nice ornamental plants, azaleas, that you're afraid that you might cause phytotoxicity to. And if you have any more questions on that, like I said, please feel free to out to us. Now, again, if we just look real quick at some practical protocols, and then we can wrap up and take some questions. As we mentioned, TransTech has a very large um, amount of pests that it is very effective against. So um, anywhere from hemlock woolly adelgid to different scale insects to aphids, it can be very effective on these. Um, and the nice thing about it is that it falls really well into this plant healthcare toolbox of application where it can be used as a foliar spray or a soil application. Um, to look at how we can incorporate it into a protocol, if we look at scales, um, you guys are probably familiar with um, a scale insect life cycle, whereas the females lay eggs under their protective shells or tests. At some point, those eggs hatch and the crawlers leave the protection of their um, mother's covering and go and settle out on new feeding sites. And when we talk about control, specifically when we talk about foliar applications, this is what we're always targeting is the are these crawlers so if we're using fuller applications we need to know what species of scale we're dealing with and what that life cycle is so that we can target these crawlers and then of course these crawlers will eventually settle down and then it'll all start all over again um, it's interesting to see how they feed and this plays into a lot of how these products work soft scales feed directly in that vascular bundle um, so again, if we think about using systemic products, they travel up through this vascular bundle. And this is why metaclopid works very well on soft scales. And with soft scales, what we often see here is this honeydew. And that's because they're feeding right in that vascular bundle and they're passively feeding. So anything they don't digest comes out of the back ends in the form of honeydew. And of course, we see sooty mold growing on that honeydew. And that's a dis uh, way to diagnose these issues in the landscape. Armored scales, on the other hand, they feed directly in cell contents. And this is why it may not work well on them, but um, something like TransTech does work, work well on them. Is it true? Be remembered that it has a very low KOC, but very high water solubility. So TransTech is able to move into these areas where these insects are feeding, whereas imidacloprid is not. And so remember that imidacloprid is not effective against armored scales. TransTech is highly effective against armored scales. And so TransTech as a fuller application can be used against scale crawlers. 
Um, but of course, it also can be used here as a soil application, um, as well as this low, lower bark spray application. Um, we talk about hemlock woolly adelgid. This is a common, especially in, on the eastern part of the United States, a common area, or excuse me, a common pest where this bark spray of trans tech can work very, very well against them. Spotter and lantern fly, this is another, this is an invasive pest. This is going to be becoming more of an issue as we get um, further on here. And right now, trans tech is becoming the industry standard. In fact, in some extension bulletins, we do say that um, trans tech is one of the preferred ways to manage spotter and lantern fly in the landscape. And then finally, to conclude with emerald ash borer, um, when we start looking at ash trees that are in this low risk preventative area, this is where trans tech can be a very effective tool, especially that lower bark spray rate. This can be incorporated into your EAB protocol, depending upon where you are in your EAB infestation and be very, very effective. Um, and if we look here, just some quick data before we take questions, we can see here that trans tech um, this is our untreated versus our treated. In this case, TransTech killed the larva, and then the tree started healing over those galleries. And just some real quick data here to show that if we use 30% crown dieback as our um, metric here, if we look at TransTech in the spring, TransTech in the spring carries us through an EAB infestation pretty well, right towards the end, right where we start seeing um, a lot of trees actually dying. So transect can be incorporated into an EAB protocol um, and be very effective. And so to conclude very quickly, uh, again, transect moves quickly to affect the pests. It has a large host range that it will affect. It can be implied in several different ways, including that lower trunk spray there. And it can be also used as a rescue treatment. We do have two more webinars coming up, one this week, um, on using Camistat to preserve our legacy trees and one next week on Dutch elm disease management. They can be found at our website, treecarescience.com. That again is my information. And if we have any questions, Matt, I will uh, turn it over to you and um, let's see if we can get some, some answered. All right, thanks, Patrick. Well done. Uh, we do have a few questions. So we'll start off with the first one we have here. Uh, is the mode of action different between imidacloprid and dinotefuran? So they are, they're both neonicotinoids, so they have the same mode of action. So if you're thinking about like a resistance, um, you know, a re reducing the chance of resistance in the landscape, which again, having pest resistance in the landscape is really difficult to do. Um, but if you're worried about resistance, then you would want to change in between um, IRAC classes. So you, if you're thinking about maintaining the same pest or managing the same pest with a metacloprid and dinotefuran, you might want to think about throwing something else in there um, to break up that, uh, that pesticide routine. All right. So next question is, what are the restrictions in relation to flowering time? So the restrictions related to flowering time is a great question. So as a foliar application, um, you can't use it any time the plant is blooming. Um, there are no restrictions around soil applications or lower bark spray applications, uh, but as a best management practice, you would want to probably apply after blooming uh, because there is, depending upon the species and even the variety within that species, there is a risk that the product, the active ingredient might move, make its way up into the blooms. Um, you would not, um, you would not be able to use this for linden trees as a um, treatment um, at any time. So if you're looking at managing either aphids or um, Japanese beetle on lindens, uh, you would need to find another product like Lepitec, that's a soil application, would be a great application. Um, Emmectin benzoate, something like Arbor Mectin as a trunk injection also should work fairly well for Japanese beetles. Okay, next question is, what is uh, TransText effectiveness on magnolia scale? So the effectiveness on magnolia scale, that's a great question um, because in parts of the country, we are finding these, these crazy magnolia scale outbreaks, specifically in like the upper Midwest and even in the Northeast, like in the far Northeast, um, like in um, Massachusetts and places like that. 
Um, so data says it should be effective. Um, now, it might be a timing issue as far as um, efficacy, as well as um, it might be something you need to think about as far as um, uh, client expectations. Um, so one thing is, is magnolia scale crawlers hatch late on in the season. And even when we're doing systemic applications, we are most effective when we are making applications um, to that um, immature crawler. So because they hatch earlier on the season, you might want to hold off and treat later on than you would for other scale insects. Um, the other part of it is that magnolia scale, they need to feed for a while before they are affected by the insecticide. So even if your timing is right, you might still see a lot of honeydew produced in between the time you make the application, the insect feeds, and insect feeds for a long enough time for them to perish. Um, but magnolia scale is tricky. You might need to go to an, another integrated strategy strategy of maybe even incorporating some insect growth regulators along with the systemic products if you have a situation where they're difficult to control and they're in high populations. All right, so you might have touched on this uh, next question here, but uh, that one's just, has it ever been tested with Japanese beetles? So Transect has been tested with Japanese beetles. Um, you get, depending upon, it comes down really to the size of the plant um, and um, the infestation level with Japanese beetles. Um, again, in high populations, it's just like a metacloprid. Um, the pest needs to feed on the leaf. So if you have high population, you see a lot of bites getting taken out of there and it still not, might not be at that acceptable level. Um, so it is still an option. Um, I've used it before on some things. Again, things that flower earlier on the season. Purple leaf plum would be one that stands out in my mind. Um, purple leaf plum follow, flowers early on in the season, um, well at, before the Japanese beetles comes out. Um, and we've had some decent success on that one. But again, high populations, you're still going to lose a lot of leaf area. Okay, and I haven't seen too many more come in, so this might be our last question. Uh, are there any signs of a buildup of pest resistance using TransTech? So again, out in the landscape, there's none that I am aware of. Um, so in the landscape, it is really hard to build pest resistance um, just because again, you have so many trees and so many insects. Um, so it becomes really difficult to isolate a population to the point where you have resistance buildup. Um, not impossible but difficult. And as of right now, there's none that I know of that are in the landscape. There might be some in um, like greenhouse scenarios, but nothing that I'm aware of in the landscape. Okay, and we have one more come in and then after that we'll wrap this up. Uh, how large of a tree would this be effective for EAB? So for EAB, um, we're probably gonna be looking at the cutoff around you know 20 to 25 inches. Um, and again, there's a lot of factors that go into that. It goes into the uh, how close it is to the nearest infestation, um, the site, how healthy the tree is, uh, things of that nature. Um, but usually right around that kind of 20 to 25 inch mark is where we start thinking about um, going with an m mectin benzoate um, treatment across the board. All right, thanks, Patrick. Well, that's all we have for today. Uh, if you have any other questions that come up later, feel free to call Patrick or the Solution Center. Um, and don't forget to check out our website and any more of our spring upcoming webinars. Uh, thanks for attending, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.